trying to kill as many zombies as possible, and blood and guts, and more guts and brains. Hi everyone, my name is Jen Rains, and I'm the teen librarian at the Trails West Branch of the Kansas City Public Library, and I'm here to talk to you about horror. Little Creeping Things by Chelsea Icaza. Well, this book is more of a thriller. I thought it deserved to be on this list just simply because of the creepy doll on the cover. Little Creeping Things is the story of Cassidy, also known as the Little Fire Girl. She's called this because when she was little, she accidentally set a fire that killed her best friend. She's made fun of and bullied for this, even in high school, by her nemesis, Melody. But when Melody turns out missing, Cassidy is one of the only witnesses to the case. But Cassidy has a very dark secret. She wanted Melody gone too. But when Cassidy starts receiving text messages from the person who kidnapped Melody, she gets entangled in the whole affair. Ghostwood Song by Erica Waters. Ghostwood Song is a story about Shady Grove and her family living in the backwoods of Florida. Shady plays fiddle in a band with her friend Sarah in Orlando. Her father, who's now deceased, taught her to play fiddle when she was very young. Shady feels closer to him whenever she plays. Her father used to own a magic fiddle that could raise ghosts from the grave. It was lost in the lake where he drowned or so four souls, Shady. It was lost in the lake where he drowned or so Shady thinks. When her brother is accused of murder, Shady goes on a quest to find her father's lost fiddle in order to get her brother out of prison. Burn Our Bodies Down by Rory Powell. This book is creepy and chilling in all kinds of good ways. Margot has always been alone with her mother. It's just been the two of them against the world. But Margot's mother has secrets. Secrets that Margot wants to uncover. When Margot goes digging, she finds the town of Faye and her grandmother. When Margot goes to Faye and gets her mother's wishes, and meets up with her grandmother, she discovers that sometimes secrets really shouldn't stay buried. Blood Countess by Lana Popovic. Anna is a poor commoner in her Eastern European village. She gets summoned to the castle of Countess Elizabeth Bathory in order to work for her. Intrigued by the money that she can send home to her family, Anna agrees. Her and Elizabeth develop a wonderful friendship, but there is more to Elizabeth than meets the eye. I feel sorry for Elizabeth because she's slowly going insane the whole time. And Anna's there to be like, I'm really sorry you're going crazy. Can I help you? <laughs> nah, doc. The Hazelwood and the Night Country by Melissa Albert. Alice Proserpine and her mother are always on the move, never staying in one place very long. Alice begs her mother to settle down. And when they finally do, in New York City, all f breaks loose. <laughs> Can I say that? All H-E double hockey sticks breaks loose. When her mother is taken by bad men claiming to be from the hinterland, Alice and her friend Ellery must go on a quest to find her mother. I don't really like Alice in these stories. I know she's the main character, but she's not my favorite. Ellery is a much more likable character. So if you're gonna root for anybody in the books, root for Ellery. Got it, guys? The Twilight Zone TV series. An absolute horror classic. The Twilight Zone is forever remain in my heart as the essence of spooky. The new Twilight Zone with Jordan Peele really does do justice to Rod Serling's classic horror anthology. Rod Serling's voice still gives me goosebumps to this day, just like it did when I was a kid watching The Twilight Zone with my grandparents. With a multitude of different types of horror, there really is something for everyone. Paired with the creepy music and the strange lessons at the end of each episode, The Twilight Zone makes you think a little bit about your horror, not just straight blood and guts. The No Sleep Podcast. This horror anthology podcast takes stories from the No Sleep subreddit on reddit.com and listener submissions in order to build their podcast. With a huge back catalog and weekly episode, there's always going to be something to listen to for free. This podcast is a little more on the mature side and has some language and trigger warnings, so be prepared if you want to give that a listen. The voice acting is top notch and the production value is great. So every story is vastly different and horror lovers will always find something that suits their taste. The Astonishing Legends Podcast. 
Huge shout out to Scott and Forrest and the entire ARC. This is hands down my favorite podcast of all time. They cover all sorts of topics, hauntings, paranormal, cryptozoology, and so much more. My favorite horror themed episodes from the Astonishing Legends is the Black Eyed Kids. It scared me so much I will not answer the door after dark anymore. Every topic is well researched and Scott and Forrest have such a great natural talent that they make every topic interesting and informal informational <laughs> great let me go back not every topic is horror related but definitely check out the skinwalker ranch black eyed kids and sally house episodes if you are interested in horror if you prefer more of a storytelling approach check out the midnight library an affiliated podcast the narrator is delightfully spooky and it's designed to have more emphasis on the story behind the horror both podcasts are family friendly and will have a warning if there's mature material maggie Maggie is a zombie movie without all the traditional zombie movie tropes of the lone survivor trying to kill as many zombies as possible and blood and guts and more guts and brains or the ragtag group of survivors who are just out there trying to live day by day. Maggie gets infected with a virus during a pandemic and her father Arnold Schwarzenegger stays with her in order to help her through her transformation. What I like about this movie is while it does have some elements of a traditional zombie movie, it also has heart, which I thoroughly enjoyed. Summer of 84. A group of teenagers believe that their neighbor, who is a police officer, is also a serial killer. When boys their age start going missing, this plucky group of teens decide that they're going to stake him out and gather evidence against him. Set in the 80s, this is going to be a fan favorite for those who like Stranger Things. The kids are really likable, and you can feel the frustration when the parents don't listen to them and brush them off, especially when it comes to all the evidence that they've gathered against the police officer. This movie starts out kind of slow, but the last 20 minutes make up for the whole thing. This film isn't rated and does contain some strong language, so if that's not your jam, maybe you could skip the movie. But it's really good, so you really shouldn't skip the movie. Thanks for watching, everyone. Make sure to like and subscribe. A list of everything that I talked about will be in down below in the description. Stay creepy. Sorry, is it, is it me? Sorry. Yes, you. I'm so sorry. I'm like, yeah, you got this. You're, you're like great. I'm like, oh, I'm done. I'm doing so great.